palme taco yapi. Oas chante washte anape chiu zapi. Dama kota do, chan shayapi he mataha. Hunkake mi tawa, chanku washte wa ohanaya. Ina ish, mini washte wi chakpe wi. Oyate mi tawa, madewa kantwa e wi chaki api, a he pana, a maki api. Hello, my relatives. I greet you all with a good heart and a handshake. I am a Dakota. I come from the place where they paint the trees red. My parents are He Travels a Good Road and Mini Washte Wichakpewe is Good Water Star Woman, who is my mother. My people are called the Dwellers of Spirit Lake and they call me Second Born. I am the director of cultural resources for the Shakopee Mittawakanta Sioux community. And I'm here today to explain a few of the daily items used in Dakota life. Today I'd like to begin with some of the uh, tools that were used for farming. This small item is a part of an antler. It was used for softening up the ground, scraping and digging. This, this item is a elk antler and it was used for basically poking a hole in the earth so seeds could be planted and fertilizer could be added. This is a deer scapula, and this item would have been made into a hoe and, and used for hoeing the ground. It was also used in hide processing. Moving on, this is an example of the scapula hoe. And before they began using scapula or bone tools, they had stone tools. This is an example of a stone hoe that was found near Lake Minnetonka. Aside from farming, Dakota people had to clothe themselves and so they used other parts of the animal um, for making their clothes and uh, containers and other items of daily necessity. For example, they would use some of the hide to make sheaths for their knives this is a bone-handled knife made from a, a scythe. This is a small, smaller version of a, a knife case decorated with tink tinkler shells that come, came from trading. Um, this tool is made from an elk antler and it's a scraper, fleshing tool. Um, this would be used on large areas of the hide and then as they got to the edges of the hide they would use these small stone scrapers to help remove the flesh. Um, these are examples of moccasins that would be made from the hide, decorated um, with beads. These are more of a contemporary item or decoration and these hides would be made or decorated with both bead and quill work. Quill came from porcupine or bird. Other items that were used were antler from the buffalo. This is an example of a buffalo horn spoon or ladle that's been decorated and carved with an eagle head. Uh, specific items like this would sometimes be used only for ceremonial feasting. To sew some of these items together, attaching the beads and etc., they would make thread from sinew of the animal. The sinew was also used for their bowstrings. Here we have two examples of bowstrings. One has been colored red. Other items that were used from the buffalo were its fur. This is buffalo fur. This would have been used for stuffing to make something soft like a, a teepee pillow or a backrest. Uh, sometimes it would be tied into rope and be used this way. And this is how they would uh, use for bundling purposes or 
perhaps even as a bridle for their horse. Because we were a seasonal migratory people who followed the game and, and the seasons of harvest, we needed containers. And so some of the hides from the animals that we hunted were used to make items like this quiver, which could also be used as a feather case, or a small teepee bag with the porcupine quill designs representing the camps moving. When they moved the camp, they would take some of the teepee poles and use them as travois, and so they would leave marks along the prairie or in the earth. Another item from the buffalo was its bladder, which we used as a water container. Or we could make this into something that could hold our quills, because quills are very, very sharp, very pointed, but they cannot penetrate the hide of the bladder. Thank you for your time today. We hope that you enjoyed taking a look at some of the items that we have housed here at Hochokata Tea. Wopida chichiapido.